September is historically the worst month of the year for the stock market, but it's also the best month of the year to buy the dip, as October, November, and December are historically some of the best months of the year of the stock market. But knowing when to buy the dip is crucial because a lot of people buy too early and they end up losing money when stocks sell off later in the month. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I plan to invest prior to the sell-off and how I plan to invest after the sell-off. Specifically, I'm gonna be showing you what I plan to do with options in order to maximize my profits during this historical September sell-off. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Stock Curry. I'm a former Merrill Lynch and Morgan Stanley investment banker, and I have over 25 years of trading experience. Now, before I can show you exactly what I plan on doing, let me show you the timing of all of this, because it's not as simple as just saying stocks are going to fall in September. And then after I show you the timing, I want to explain why stocks sell off in September. And once you understand all of that, you'll be far better positioned to actually make a lot of money during the September sell off. The first thing you have to understand on timing is that for the first three weeks of September through September 19th, stocks historically rise. It's not until the last week of September that stocks typically have that massive September sell-off. So when we talk about September being the worst month of the year for the stock market and almost always going down, that sell-off doesn't actually start until September 20th. So if we look at a calendar for September, that means the first three weeks of September are historically green, and it's only the last week of September that is historically red. Unfortunately, that last week of September is so red, it completely wipes out all of the profits from the first three weeks. Now, very important to understand, since I will be talking about options in this video, is that September 20th is the third Friday of the month, and that is the options expiration date for September. It's also important to understand that large caps and small caps do not perform the same. The red bars on this chart show what large caps do. As you can see, September is the only month where those are red, and October, they actually go up. But blue is the small cap stocks. And as you can see here on this chart, small caps typically sell off in September and October before starting to rebound in November. So if you do plan to buy the dip, make sure you're only buying the dip on large cap stocks in September. Do not buy the dip on small cap stocks until October. Making money in the stock market is a combination of getting the direction right and getting the timing right. So if you didn't fully understand the timing that I just went through, go back and rewatch the last few minutes of this video so that you can get a really good understanding of when the market actually falls. It's not throughout the whole month of September. The first three weeks are green. It's the last week of September where you're going to make the most amount of money with something like a put option. Now that we understand how the timing of all of this works, we have to understand why this happens because any change in the news cycle could affect the timing of this. This historical sell-off in September actually has a name and it's called the September effect. The September effect refers to the historically weak stock market returns observed during the month of September. In fact, September has been the worst performing month on average, going back nearly a century. This is, however, an average observed over nearly a century, and September is certainly not the worst month of stock market trading every single year. In fact, for some years, September has been among the best performing months. That said, if an individual had bet against September over the last 100 years, that individual would have made an overall profit. 
while betting against the stock market in September historically does show a profit, and while waiting until the last day of September to buy the dip is usually the best way to play this, it's important to understand that it's not always the case. Whenever we're using history to make decisions on what to trade, we have to understand that history doesn't always repeat itself. Sometimes it just rhymes. Now, the best way to know whether or not history will in fact repeat itself this year is to look at some of the market news and some of the things that are going to move the market in September. In order to do that and make trades based upon that, we first have to understand what news generally causes the market to have this major sell-off at the end of the month. It's also important to understand that while the stock market typically suffers in September, this year the markets could face even more pain than normal. And that has to do with the fact that stock market valuations are already lofty or frothy, however you want to call it. A lot of stocks, especially tech stocks, are already and still quite overvalued, which is why any sell-off we get in September could be worse than we normally would see. And... That said, there's also another reason why this September could be a little bit worse than normal, and it has to do with the Federal Reserve. See, this isn't just the worst month of the year for the stock market, it's also the worst month of the year for the bond market. And what is the number one thing that affects the bond market? It's the Federal Reserve. On September 18th, just one day before the stock market historically tops out in September, the FOMC is having their two-day press meeting where they are widely expected to lower interest rates. But the lowering of interest rates is already priced in. What concerns me and is concerning a lot of market investors is what Jerome Powell is actually going to say on September 18th. What he says could trigger a stock market crash because the stock market almost always tops out within three months of the Federal Reserve doing their first rate cut. So with the first rate cut now coming on September 18th, we know the stock market always tops out either three months before to three months after the Federal Reserve does the first rate cut. And after the market tops out, it will often go on a nine-month sell-off, very similar to what we saw in 2022. So this is causing a lot of fear that once the Federal Reserve does cut interest rates on September 18th, it could actually trigger a nine-month sell-off. And history would once again back that up. So this is another reason why that September 18th, September 19th, September 20th time frame is where we can expect the top of the market and then a sell-off over the next week to week and a half. But there's another reason beyond just the Federal Reserve why we might actually see a pretty significant sell-off at the end of September and why we historically do. It all has to do with the annual federal budget. You see... Congress is supposed to approve a federal budget by June 30th, but the deadline for the House to approve the annual appropriations bills in practice rarely occurs. Congress almost never approves the federal budget by June 30th. They almost always take much longer than that. And usually they go well into September and sometimes into October before the budget is actually approved. And this is where we have a major problem. You see, the new fiscal year begins with or without a budget on October 1st, which means the Senate and the House now have until September 30th to negotiate and propose a budget that will pass Congress and get presidential approval, no less during an election year, in order to avert a shutdown. If Congress does not approve a budget by September 30th, the federal government would shut down on October 1st. And if the federal government shuts down, it has a significantly negative effect in the economy. And anytime there's a bad economy and there's no money being paid out to federal workers, that hurts companies, which in turn hurts stocks. And that is why we normally get a major sell-off at the end of September. 
starting on September 20th and going all the way through September 30th is where we get that massive September sell-off. And that is because this is where the market starts to get very worried and very concerned that we are going to get a federal shutdown. And if we do get a shutdown of the government and that is going to cause a major hurt on stocks, that uncertainty about the possibility of that happening because Congress just can't pass a budget is what causes stocks to fall starting September 20th and going all the way through the end of the month. And that's why we normally get the worst month of the year for stocks in September. And that's also why that major sell-off doesn't start until the last week of September. So watch out for any news around the federal budget and whether or not Congress and Democrats and Republicans can actually work together this time to get a budget approved. If they are able to approve a budget before September 20th, we could avert the historical September sell-off. So you've got to watch your eyes and keep your eyes out for news on the budget. Now, there is another thing that could cause the sell-off to start sooner rather than later. On Friday, September 6th, that's this Friday, we are getting the jobs numbers for August. This is a major concern because last month when the job numbers came out, they came out much worse than expected, which caused a lot of people to fear that we were actually possibly already in a recession. And as a result, it caused a massive sell-off in the stock market for about two weeks last month. Now, the stock market did recover at the end of August but it's important to understand that if the September jobs data, it's actually the jobs data for August, but the data that's being released on September 6th, this Friday, comes in much worse than expected again, it could cause the September sell-off to start earlier than we normally get, possibly starting as early as Friday. So we really have to watch the news to figure out the timing of all of this. But let's say that the August jobs numbers come in normal as expected. They're not a shock in any way and they don't trigger an early sell-off. And let's say that Congress once again cannot get their act together, cannot get a budget approved, and it looks like they're gonna go right up to that September 30th deadline before getting a budget approved. And then we will get our historical September sell-off starting on September 20th. So. Let's assume that everything plays out as it normally does. How do I plan on playing this? First, I do not want to buy any stocks in the first three weeks of September because more than likely they're all going to go down in the last week of September and I'm just going to end up losing money. At the same time, I don't really want to buy any call options until September 6th, Friday, at the earliest, because I wanna see what the jobs report is gonna come out and do before I do anything like that. But let's say the jobs report comes out pretty good, it's not showing a major recession yet, then I would probably be interested in buying some September 20th call options on September 6th, and then selling those on September 19th before we get that historical sell-off. Now, on September 19th, I want to flip, I wanna do a complete 180. And I am gonna be looking at buying put options for September 27th. Why would I do that? Why not go all the way to September 30th? Well, there's two reasons for this. One has to do with options themselves. Options generally have time decay. And if you buy a shorter dated option, such as a weekly option, which expires on the 27th, then those are going to be a lot cheaper. And so if the stock market does have a major sell-off, then my profit percent is going to be much higher by buying the September 27th put option than it would be if I bought, say, a put option going out into October. So I'm trying to maximize my profits here. Yes, it's a lot more risky, but if I buy a put option on September 19th, for September 27th, and the stock market does its historical sell-off, that will allow me to maximize my profits on a sell-off. 
Now, the reason I don't want to go to September 30th is this. If the government is going to come up with a deal to avert a government shutdown, it most likely happens over the weekend. And the last week in the month is the 28th and 29th, meaning that if we do avert a government shutdown and they're able to come up with some sort of stopgap bill to avert that, it will most likely happen on the 28th or 29th, which means the 30th could actually be a pretty green day for the stock market. So that's why I want to end those put options on the 27th. If you have any questions about what I just covered or any thoughts, please put them down in the comment below. I will respond to your comments and try to answer your questions that you have about all of this. And also, I noticed a lot of retail traders are going about things the wrong way. They're making a lot of mistakes and they're losing money when they don't have to be. So what I'm gonna do is something very special I've never done before. I'm putting together a master class. I'm gonna be holding the master class on September 14th at 3 p.m. Eastern time. If you wanna join us for that, you can sign up using the link below. This is gonna be the only time I ever do a masterclass like this, and it's just gonna be a one-time class to show you how Wall Street professionals trade and to show you some of the mistakes that retail investors make and help you learn some of the ways that Wall Street professionals trade so that you can implement that in your own trading and hopefully start increasing profits and making a lot more money. I'm doing this completely and totally for free. It's just to help you make more money in the stock market, stop losing money. And that's why I'm doing this class for free because I really want to help you make money. So if you want to join me, I'd love to have you. Just go register for that. It's going to be the first link in the description below. And that masterclass will take place on September 14th at 3 p.m. Eastern time.